Today marks the 39th anniversary of one of the most dramatic civil engineering disasters in post-war American history, the collapse of the Teton Dam. The dam's collapse isn't famous for the loss of life, it was actually mercifully low, or for the widespread property damage. This disaster is famous more because it even happened in the first place. Here's the story. In the 1970s, the US Bureau of Reclamation was coming off a 50 year streak of batting a thousand. Shasta, Hoover, Grand Coulee. The Bureau had a long resume of some of the most amazing public works projects ever built in America. And the very thought that one of their structures could fail completely must have seemed absurd in 1976. When they announced that they were building a large storage dam on a tributary to the Snake River in southeastern Idaho, it must have seemed like business as usual. They had done this plenty of times. The dam itself wasn't anything all that crazy. It was uh, a design that was very common, it had been done many times before. After all, there were a dozen dams just like it all across America, and none of them had ever failed. Well, not quite. In 1968, just a few hundred miles away in Wyoming, the Fontenelle Dam experienced a major near miss. The reservoir was drawn down too quickly, causing part of the earth fill to slump. The next filling of the lake revealed massive leaks in the embankment, and the dam was only saved by an emergency dumping of the reservoir through every available outlet pipe. At one point, the dam was hemorrhaging millions of gallons of water a day, but through a miracle of early detection and a whole lot of rock thrown into the breach, the dam was saved. Unlike concrete dams, which tend to fail all at once, the demise of an earth fill dam is a gradual process. Here's an example on a smaller scale, but the principle is the same. The rule of thumb is that once the water has found an unimpeded path through the embankment, the dam is doomed. It will eventually erode its way out until the entire lake comes through. Except at Fontenelle Dam, they caught it in time. Not so much at Teton. In the morning of June 5th, 1976, a small flow of water was seen coming out of the dam, right where the embankment meets up against the cliffs. By mid-morning, the flow was big enough to swallow up two bulldozers that had been sent down to push dirt into the hole. And at noon that day, the dam was breached from top to bottom. This was the largest dam failure in known human history. It completely flooded the towns of Sugar City and Rexburg, Idaho, killed 14 people, as well as 13,000 head of cattle. The human death toll was mercifully low due to the quick work of first responders. But it all happened so quickly and suddenly and so completely. I mean, think about it. At 7 a.m., you notice a small trickle of water, and by the time you're having lunch, there's a huge wall of water rolling down the canyon. It left a lot of people wondering, what happened? The answer turned out to be very technically complex, but fundamentally simple. Through a series of missteps, improper design, and contractor shortcuts, the lowest foundation of the dam, called the keyway, was improperly sealed, making the dam vulnerable to seepage. But why it happened is depressingly simple. It happened simply because the people in charge didn't believe that it ever could. Let's face it, when you have a perfect record, you can get a little bit sloppy. Confidence makes us relax and let our guard down. In 1909, the great civil engineer Leon Moiseff unveiled the Manhattan Bridge, the second big suspension bridge across the East River. It was the first bridge to really take into effect the new math behind was what we now know as deflection theory. Basically, that you can build a structure out with a certain tolerance for movement, and as long as the weight doesn't exceed that tolerance, everything should be okay. It has huge open cage steel towers, four massive suspension cables, and a deep stiffening truss designed to take even the biggest live loads. But 30 years later, Leon Moiseff's design sensibility had changed, and his Tacoma Narrows Bridge was built using one of the most risky designs imaginable. After years and years of making suspension bridges thinner and lighter, we had finally pushed deflection theory past its limit, and the wind took care of the rest. The collapse of Teton Dam marks a very important turning point in the history of American civil engineering. While we continue to make bridges bigger and bigger, Teton caused people to really rethink the building of dams. After Teton, the era of big dam building in America was over. The existing projects were shelved and most were canceled indefinitely. And I think this is such a shame. While a new era of environmental consciousness has made dam building much more controversial, the fundamental reasons for why we built dams are all still there. Water storage non-polluting power sources, irrigation, flood control. All of these problems are still there and need to be addressed in many parts of the world. These are all problems that still exist, making dams more relevant than ever in this new era of clean energy, climate change, and sustainable agriculture. Dams have been used around the world for thousands of years. They're some of the oldest technology we've ever developed. It's too bad that the responsible use of dams, one of the most time-honored tools that we have for sustaining civilization, 
has now fallen out of our toolbox. Thanks for watching. At 11.57 a.m. on June 5, 1976, the Teton Dam collapsed, flooding homes, farms, and the upper Snake River Valley with 80 billion gallons of water. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more like this, click subscribe right over here. If you would like to learn more about Teton Dam and some of the other significant dam failures of the 20th century, check out the research of Dr. David Rogers. He's at the University of Missouri. His research and presentations are fascinating. I love going through his slides. Check it out. It's awesome stuff. And if you're ever in the area of southeastern Idaho and have a chance to visit the Teton Dam site, check it out. It's actually really cool. Most of the dam is still there. The river goes around it obviously now, but you can still see this massive pyramid of dirt out in the canyon where the dam used to be. It's a fascinating bit of civil engineering archaeology. Thanks again for watching.